Good morning, everybody. It's good to see y'all this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you that every day is your day, Lord God, and that your spirit uh, is here in the midst of us, Lord, that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are, Father. So we ask that you be glorified this morning. We ask for your strength, your, uh, your mercy, your grace to be poured out in abundance this morning, that we would leave out of here recharged and ready to go uh, meet the world with your glory and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. Defender. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with never leave or forsake us. My 
my victory your spirit lives within me so i will walk in your peace your spirit lives within me my victory 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are worthy, God. Hallelujah. Shakes the ground, back and brings a rain in drought. Your glory spins the earth around. Your whisper makes you fight for down. There's no other name. There's no other. Like 
every knee Every knee will bow Every tongue confess The name of Jesus Every knee will bow Every tongue confess The name of Jesus
God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. Move the immovable. Break the about something that the Lord's told you. Maybe a promise he's given you. Something you see that it doesn't seem like it's ever going to happen. But if he said it,
You're faithful, Lord. You're worthy, God. And you are faithful to complete the word that you sent forth, Lord God, that it will not return to you void, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Give him praise, church. Hallelujah. Oh, amen, amen. Woo. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Ron, for praise and worship, leading us in praise and worship this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> praise the name of Jesus. He has to let us wake up and see another day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, this morning, I want to say welcome, 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 welcome those who are uh, uh, focusing in on us this morning with YouTube and also live streaming there at Katy Campus. Thank you for being with us. And we still would like you to hit the subscribe button and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your loved ones, and, and tune, let them tune in to the message. We are getting some good word that the Lord has put forth and let us come forth and listen to the message of the Lord this morning. All right. If we have any visitors, I I would like to welcome the visitors and get with me uh, after church and I'll have a small gift for you after church and fill out our visitors card so we can keep in touch, right? Amen. Well, on our prayer list, we have Sister Candy. That's Brother Harold and uh, Kathy's uh, daughter. She's in the hospital. She's not doing well, but we have faith, and our family have faith, and they're praying. And like I told her sister the other day, keep praying. Don't give up praying. And also strengthen her and let her know that she has to also pray for herself and have faith that the Lord can raise her up. He can do whatever he wants to do. If it's according to his will, he can do it. Don't we believe that? Amen. We are going to keep Brother Darian, which is in the army, in our prayers. He wrote the pastor a letter. He's going to read that later on, and he's doing very well. His uh, uh, sister Timmons, her grandchildren, two of her girls are not feeling well, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, as they're at home, they not they didn't come out today, and keep them in your prayer. Keep Sister Flory and Sister Maddie in your prayers continually. They have not returned yet, but we pray that one day soon that they'll be back among us here at the church live. Okay, all right. We'll go on down to change for mission. We know every uh, Sunday, first Sunday, we say we give uh, change for mission for Belize for a bus. But I ask that if you would like, please put in change every Sunday when you come. It can just be a dime, penny, nickel, or whatever you find or have. Just put it in the jar on the table there to the side for our mission, all right? Going down to the T-shirts. We have $10 T-shirts for sale. If you would like a T-shirt, please fill out the form on the table, and we will order your T-shirt. Also, now we have the gold sweatshirts. If you would like a go sweatshirt for uh, sweatshirt for twenty five dollars, we do have those on sale. And if you want a go sweatshirt for the winter time, please fill out the form, and we will order that for you. 
as you all know, next Sunday is our community, uh, not a community to be able to, but a cluster culture attire, sorry, dress. And we're going to dress in our culture attire. And please try to come and dress in your culture attire. That's November the 7th. And we will be doing that here. Uh, and we'll be live streaming also with the Katie Church. So dress up and we'll do that on November the 7th. All right, they have the Go Church Advance. That's on November the uh, 20th. That's an all-day thing, and the pastor uh, will talk to you more about that as time comes. That'll be on November the tw uh, 20th for that. All right, how about Blessed Day? We talked about that. Two pies per family, and we ask that you keep one, and what you're supposed to do with the other one? Give it away. Bless somebody. And that open up a yes, that open up a door that you can minister to someone else, right? Yes, it does. Yes. And so uh take the pies on that be on November the twenty first that we'll be distributing those pies and take those pies and give one away and you can eat the other. All right. All right, this is a clay shooting. This is some kind of men's gathering. And the pastor is gonna tell you more about that. That's on December the eleventh. And it's a men's gathering, and uh, he'll tell you more about that coming up soon, right? All right, you know that we have four ways of giving. We do in person, and like I always say, fill out your envelope, put your name on there, put Tomball Campus, and that's if you're going to do it on, on in person, put it in the basket there on the table to my right and your left. And then we also do it online. Don't forget that. You can go gochurch.org slash give if you want to give online. We have also your text, your phone. We use our phone all day, every day. And we can text our tithes and, and offerings in by texting 84321. That's 84321. Text it in if you would like. All right, if you want to, you can do it the old-fashioned way, I call it. Uh, get you an uh, envelope and a stamp and put your check in there. And also on that check, put Tom Ball Campus. And you're going to uh, send that check to P.O. Box 1261 Katy, Texas. All right? And that's how you do the four ways of giving. All right. You know that our help come from the Lord, right? Yeah. There's no man. You can, pray, you can pray to man. Man can't fix your problem. A man cannot help you, but God can. And he says that if we call on the Lord, he can and he will help us in our time of need. And you know what? One good thing I like out this verse I'm going to be reading, y'all, is that he don't sleep. We have to get our rest. We have to get our rest to even function with each other, right? But God don't need the rest. He don't need it, and he said he do not sleep, and his ears are open to our prayers, and we need to continue to ask him for our help. All right. If you would like to write down the verses from Psalms 121, 1 through 3, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. That means he will not sleep. Isn't that wonderful good news? Well, praise the Lord for the reading of his word. And I thank you all for coming and joining with us. And God bless you. Amen. Amen. Fred, put that, put that back up on the screen for the uh, men thing. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, we're so glad to have the Johnsons back this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Safe and sound. Amen. 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 Glad to have all of you here this morning. Amen. Just wanted to kind of real quickly uh, talk about the, the announcements. This is a men's meet gathering, uh, like we had the men gathering breakfast. This is a men gathering, uh, but it will be a clay shooting. And that means you'll be shooting at the clay, you know. Uh, they are having it out, I, I believe that's going to be done out at Don's uh, place, ranch. Uh, and so Don will actually be giving us more uh, on it. Uh, matter of fact, I'll be getting some information so that you may want to contact Donna if you have any questions about it. Amen. Uh, uh, that was one of the things when we met at the men's breakfast that they were saying maybe would be the next thing. They had several next things we may do. Well, that this sounds like fun. I'm jealous. This, this, <laughs> this, this, this was on the list. This was on the list. So uh, that's, that's what they decide uh, to do. So anyway, that'll be done on December the 11th. Also, on the one, Fred, for the cultural uh, attire that we're going to be having, uh, 
on that cultural tide day, yeah, that community of culture, we have decided we're going to live stream this instead of trying to do it here and there because uh, this is our first time, and I think we'll get the impact of it by doing it live stream. Be and then maybe next year we'll be able to do it ourselves because it's some music done as well in there. Uh, so they, they got cultural music being done, and so uh, I think we may miss out that if we don't really live stream it so that we can really get the, uh, what, what that's really uh, doing. And so we're going to do live streaming on that. The other thing is in November the 20th, uh, there is an advance, Sister Devon spoke of it, but yeah, church advance. That's going to be on a Saturday. It's going to be an all-day Saturday uh, I say all day. I think it's going to be in the morning, I think, in the afternoon. I got to get, get it down. But it's going to be on a Saturday. And it's teachings. It's uh, teachings, different teachings. Uh, I think I'll be teaching there on, on forgiveness. I think I've been given to teach on. Uh, on and different ones have different things. They'll be, so it'll be small segments of people teaching on different things. Uh, and this is a... Yeah, this is going to be done in Katy. Uh, I think Go Church in Katy had this every year. I think they didn't have it last year because of the COVID, but uh, I'm sure you, you might know more about the advanced. Uh, uh. It's kind of like a continuation of the Go 101, and it just gets a little deeper. Okay. All right. So they're going to have Go Advanced at the church uh, on Saturday, November the 20th. It's November the 20th, but he said it. Yeah, it's my, I think it's an all-day event, I think. Is it, did it go all day? I, I say all day. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about morning to maybe sometime in the afternoon. Also, we have, thank you, Fred. Also, we have a letter from Darren, our soldier boy. I mean, our soldier man. <laughs> and he wrote it to the church. He said, hey, church family, I miss all of you guys. I can't wait to attend service again. I want to thank everyone for encouraging me teaching me the way of Christ, helping me to become a man of God, giving me the extra motivation and love to join the U.S. Army. Here is my address if anyone wants to write me something to scriptures or word of encouragement or anything positive. So I have his address. I can give that to you if you would like to copy it off of here. Uh, he said, learning a lot out here. I'm having fun. I will be back in December if the Lord say the same. Bless you all in your goings and your coming until we meet again. Timothy, uh, 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 Timothy, uh, yeah, Timothy. Uh, anyway, so here we can see, no, no doubt about it is that Darren Timmons, I'm sorry. Uh, Darren is very excited about the Army. Uh, it was a little rough when he started out, but now he's, he's going on at it and uh, I'm so grateful. You know, I was, I was reading this letter, and I told Sister Deborah, I, I see, because I spent a lot of time talking to Darren over the, over the year, last two years, 2019, 2020, uh, and of course, we're in 2021, but, but uh, I have, I, I, I've seen, I see so much change in this. I, I see somebody that come from the, the little young man to a grown man. I can tell it in his writing. I can tell it in the approach of his writing. Uh, he has come up to another level. And, and I was telling Sister Deborah, that is just what I was hoping Amen. would happen, yeah. is that he would get in and begin to mature and grow. Yeah. And I just think with the help of God and with him trusting God, right. sky is the limit to what God would do in using uh, his time in the military. And plus, the Lord said the same when he come home. If he chooses to come home, he might choose to do a life, a life for him. I don't know. But whenever he chooses to come home or whatever, is that God would use him mightily uh, in all the things he has called him to do. So we're excited about that. I'm excited because I know that the challenges that it took for him to actually uh, go in and, uh, and be, uh, be able to apply himself. Because, you know, sometimes it's difficult when you haven't had much exposure to the outside world or to the world, period, and you've kind of been living around home and and taking care of his grandfather for about three or four years out of high school, just being there with him 24-7. And then all of a sudden you jump on a plane, fly away to South Carolina, and then you're in the military, a bunch of strangers you never met before, and now you... So it took him a little while to adjust. I remember t talking to him, and I remember his first sergeant he had. He just thought his first sergeant didn't care for him. I told him none of the sergeants seemed like they care for you when you get in there. 
Don't even worry. None of the drill sergeants seem like they care for you. They all seem like they hate you, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but, but he come to realize that, that he had to stop personalizing it. Yes. It wasn't about him. It, it, wasn't, it was about all of them. They, they're always being treated this certain way. So anyway, but anyway, thank God for him and thank God that he's doing well. Amen. Amen. Let's get a lot of hand clap for that because that's a, that's a big step for a young man to take that have never been anywhere before and, and never done much before. And he's grateful to his church family. Amen. I'm looking for the uh, changer. Yeah, I got it up here. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't see it. But anyway, uh, I was looking for the... There you go, Fred. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. All right. So, but I, but I was so grateful that he wrote a letter to, to the church. He wrote a letter here to his church family. So that's for all of you. He's appreciative of all of you and what you have done. And I wanted to say that's what, that's how, that's what it's all about, people. You know, we, we can go out and with our mouth, we can talk to people about the Lord and share the good news of Jesus Christ. But when you love people and you share with people and you dare for people and you, you watch people grow, that's what it's all about. Amen? Amen? It's about seeing people mature and grow in the things of God and loving them in the kingdom. And so I'm so grateful for that. Let's be in prayer for his mother, because his mother texted me and said that the, the, her granddaughters, who she's keeping, was feeling ill. And she texted last night that they weren't feeling well. And so uh, we want to keep them in prayer as, as well. Amen. And of course, we mentioned uh, Harold's daughter, who is very ill. But we know that God is able to do abundantly above all that we can think and ask. And, and, we, and, and she needs a miracle. Amen. She needs a miracle. You know, is that that prayer where the doctors are saying they can't do anything and, 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 and anything they do uh, may not necessarily help? Uh, we know that we serve a God that when doctors say they can't do anything, uh, doesn't mean you, you can be standing in the best place you can be where you can put your total trust in him. So we want to we want to believe that God is can heal and we know that he can and we want to say that his words say that he can, and so we want to say that we are willing to believe it. I tell people we will believe it until God does something different. Amen. Right now she's living. We'll believe it until God chooses to do something different. Amen. Amen. And so that's what we're going to do. Amen. Someone want to uh, ask uh, one of the ministers, I don't forget who it was, uh, about what, how he feel about the fact when he pray for some folks and they don't make it. He said, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we can ask God about it. He said, but I know one thing. I'm going to pray for all of them. You see, because the thing is, I've seen many that have made it, that God have healed. So, you know, those, if you want to focus on the one that don't get it, that's one thing. We're going to just focus that God does heal. And his word teach it, amen. We say, he said it, we what? We believe it. Amen. Well, today we're going to talk about a subject that, uh, let's get into the word today. Uh, we're going to talk about a subject I think that is very important. Uh, uh, for a lot of reasons, but we're going to talk about the Sabbath. And we're going to talk about uh, it from the perspective of the word cease. And you'll learn today that the word cease actually, the word Sabbath actually means to cease. Okay? Sometimes we say to take rest or to take time off. Uh, what I want to do today is that I'm, I'm going to go a, a, a somewhere with this, somewhat different. Uh, I thank God that I have leisure to move around with this the way I think it needs to be. But I want to say something to you is that when we look at this, uh, this teaching on the Sabbath, we really want to be able to understand what the Word of God and what is really behind Sabbath. What does it mean? What is God really intending? for us when we talk about a Sabbath. Amen? Uh, uh, a time to cease. I think the best place to go is start back where God first gave it, and that's what's in uh, Genesis. Amen? I'm sorry. That, it doesn't skip. There it is, Genesis. Uh, in Genesis, we first hear about this whole thing of rest, uh, the seven-day rest. And it says here in the scripture, it says, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his works, which God had created 
and made. Amen. It is something because God made all his creation. Amen. He made man on the sixth day and then looked like he intentionally rested on the seventh day. Now, you and I know God was not tired. All right. We know he was not tired. So we know God wasn't tired and said, you know, I'm so tired. I've been working all these six days. I guess I'll take a rest. But no, no, he wasn't tired. But we can see that on the uh, sixth day, uh, he made man, and then he intentionally rest on the seventh day. And he was told, he told his children Israel that they, uh, that, that they should uh, recognize the Sabbath and that they should actually observe the Sabbath. And that's what he gave to Israel. We see that in Exodus 16.23. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will, bake today, boil what you will, boil, and lay up for yourself all that remains to keep until the morning. This was a day that Israel set aside to rest. Amen? amen. And, and they, they, they rest from all their works, amen, and all their stresses, and basically, they stood still. Simply, they stood still. And uh, I'm sure their bodies and their hearts and their minds were able to get some rest. Amen? Today, we're going to look at this, uh, this divine day of the week, the Sabbath. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about observing it. Amen? And what's behind the Sabbath? What is actually behind the Sabbath? I want to say to you, I think something very unique is that God gave the Sabbath after he created Adam. After he created man, then he gave the Sabbath. And I think we're going to look at that as, as a time. What was that about? Was it, could it have been about the fact that God wanted to spend time with Adam after he had created everything? And so he established a day of rest. Amen? Amen. It could have very well been that. It, it, maybe it could have been that. We don't know. But I, I'm saying I believe that the, the Sabbath has a lot to do with the fact that God may have wanted us to have this time to cease and to spend time focusing on our relationship with him. Amen? Amen. Now, let me say this. We are not Jews, uh, but the Jews do congregate, and they have the Sabbath as something that they believe can be a game changer for their walk with the Father. And I believe as far as we know, as well, we, we also can say the same. Transition, what is an amazing gift that God has given to us? A day just to stop and stand still. Now, let me say to you, I want to say God gave this day to us. He did not make us for the day. It's very important that we understand that Jesus made it clear that man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. It was given unto us. And I think one of the reasons it was given unto us that we might stop. Just stop. Just stop. And, and take it easy. Just stop for a moment. You know, we are very busy people. We're always moving. We're always doing things. We're always going places. Uh, life seemed to never stop. And, and it looked like God just said, I want you to take time to stop. I want you to take time to rest. To take it easy. Right. Simple as that. It, it, some people make it very difficult. But I believe that God knew in creating man, no doubt about it, is that he needed a place to rest. And I think rest was not only just physically and mentally, but I think also along with emotionally, but I think also rest was spending time just in God's presence, so to speak. And I'm not talking about like praying all day, but just acknowledging him because you might, you might uh, have this Sabbath day and you might just sit out at the beach and just do nothing and just look at the waves come in. Or you might go to a mountain or a quiet place. Or you might spend time with your family or something. Just, just, just around the table together uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of silence and quiet time together. But anyway, I want to say the important was that he wanted us to stop. Say stop. stop. Yeah, stop and be still. You know, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and acknowledge me. Be still and know that I have created you. And I've created you that you and I might have a relationship together. Amen? Spend time together. Jesus wrote these words in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
No doubt about it, this rest is what God desired for his people. I think that we often equate Sabbath with a day where all of our works have been done. Everything is wrapped up nicely in a little boat. You know, like some people say, well, I got to get all this done because I got to get, I got to rest on the Sabbath. I got to get all this work done. But actually, it could be us stopping in the middle of what we're doing and taking time out. Not trying to get it all done to take time out. Sometimes right in the middle of what we're doing and take time out. Let me say to you, sometimes people are so busy that they're missing things that's come down right underneath their noses. I tell you, if you get too busy, you would definitely miss God. Just because if you're not taking that time out to spend with him, you would totally miss what it is that God is speaking in these last days. They have an author named Mark Bergenham, I think his name is, uh, writes about the Sabbath. He says, it is a sheer gift. It is a stop work order in the midst of work that never completes, never polished. Sabbath is not the break we are allowed, but it's the tail end of completing all our tasks and chores. The fulfillment of all our obligations. Amen. I think I got that up there. That is. The fulfillment of all our obligations. It's the rest we take smack dab in the middle of them without apology, without guilt, and for no better reason that God told us we could. In other words, we just stop in our tracks and take a break. Amen. That's it. Just take a break. Now, personally, I believe these breaks are because God knows the physical body we in needs it too from time to time. You stress, you're moving, you're doing a whole lot. I'm often wondering whether or not might be, could that be, maybe it is, some reason why we tend to uh, suffer so much in our bodies because we don't rest as we ought to. Amen? Maybe that could be very something that we are missing. We are not resting. It's important for us to stop and rest. Amen? And sometimes even we need to just sit still. Amen? And believers that, uh, let me say this, that sometimes when we are, are steady on the move, we are missing the things that God has for us. And it's hard. It's hard for me. It's hard for others sometimes. Well, it's not as hard for me now than it used to be. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, uh, it's not as hard to stand still as it used to be. Amen. I tell you, sometimes just age will make you stand a little still. Slow you down, show sure up. Amen. Make you think before you put one foot before the other. Amen. Transitioning. It says, And I feel like this some something uh, so far for us. Amen. Uh, to hear because we constantly are being told that we have to work and work and strive and grind. But if we look at the life of Jesus, that's not what he did all the time. Matter of fact, sometimes Jesus did things backwards. When people were sleeping, Jesus was awake. When people was awake and worrying about what's going on, Jesus was sleeping. So, so sometimes he just did things different. Amen. You, you can see that he definitely wasn't on our time clock all the time. And, and he knew that it took time. Jesus would actually pull himself away and take time to pray. He understood that there had to be a time to, to take a break. Amen. And so sometimes he was doing one thing when people around him was doing another. There's a quote that said, it's not a mark of health to be well adjusted to a sick society. Amen. It's not, a, it's not a mark of health to be well adjusted to a sick society. Amen? You want to remember that. You don't want to be well adjusted to a sick society. Our values and our worth isn't tied up in how much we have going on. Our values and our worth are determined, do not determine how busy we are, how much in our bank account. Our values and worth are found in our relationship, write this down, in our relationship with God. You got to understand that before Adam had anything, it was just him and God. Amen. Amen. Adam had a relationship with God that very unique. And I think even him and Eve together, I think even when God came in the midst of the, in, 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 of the day looking for Adam and Eve when they was not able to be found after they had sinned, I think that was a, that was a normal thing for God to come and look for Adam and Eve. It was not nothing... Uh, he, it was all about relationship. It was all about time 
spent with God. Our value and our worth are found in our relationship with God. Now, let me say that it is that relationship is done because of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us on the cross. But think about that. When you think about your value, it's all about your relationship with God. Amen. Now, I want to look back at the backdrop of Exodus, and we see that the Sabbath began as an institution that gave, uh, inst- it was instituted and, and also was given to the children of Israel. And even when they were slaves in Egypt, right before they got ready to come out, God told them to come out, Pharaoh to let them go, and let them go sacrifice unto him. Amen? Amen. And, and Pharaoh thought that the Egyptians or the, or the Israelites were actually just being lazy, that they didn't really want to work no more. But actually God said, let my people come out, let them come out to the, to, to the, uh, uh, to the desert out here and let them sacrifice to me and let them come before me. And then Pharaoh says, uh, lazy. That's what you are. You're lazy. That's why you keep saying, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. And this is another translation, but in, 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 in Exodus uh, chapter 5, uh, verse 17, he's saying, you're lazy. You're just lazy. Now, let me say something. I think that Pharaoh might have had something in here that he might have understood, and that is it, that when the children of God would go out and they would sacrifice to God, they would begin to move into a place of worship. Hey, Amen. If you're going to go out and you're going to sacrifice to your God, that's like worshiping him. And you know, Pharaoh's had a big problem with you worshiping anything but them. Or they're gods. But God say, I want my people to come out and to worship me. And so therefore he said, listen, I'm not going to give you rest until you let my people come out and be, and be with me. And, that, and, and so Pharaoh fought against that, but we know that the children of Israel uh, was able to go anyway. Say worship, worship. is a key part of the Sabbath. Part the yeah, spending time with God, amen is a key part of the Sabbath. It's that ultimate rest. We're going to look today because I want to say to you, there's much have been said about the Sabbath. And, uh, you know, you have your seven-day Adventists who basically uh, teach uh, that we should uh, meet, have service on Saturday. And and, uh, they did do something. They uh, did a thing uh, where they, uh, some years ago, uh, some parts in California where the Seventh Day Adventists is, is very strong in that part of the country, and they were seeing that they had some health. Uh, that they that those who are Seventh Day Adventists seem to have better health conditions than others among the church. Uh, but they they were they they eat things that are different, and they definitely rest on the Sabbath day. And so we can see where it was some beneficial thing they looked up and saw was taking place from them actually uh, keeping the Sabbath, amen? But one of the things that I want you to see today is that Jesus said that he had finished the work which was given him and that he rested in trusting in the Father. Let me say to you, we have to rest also in putting our trust in God. Rest as if all your work is done. Amen. That's that rest in Hebrews that actually tell us to enter into. It's a rest as if all your work is done. Why? Because you are truly trusting in God. When we struggle with rest, it's because our trust is a, 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 a struggling. That's what it is. It's just a matter of our, our, our trust issues are struggling. When you and, you and I struggle with trusting God, then it's hard to rest because we feel like we need to do something. We need to fix it. We need to get it done. Something we need to do, amen? But Jesus says, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Jesus completed only the work that absolutely had to be finished. The more we trust in the work he completed, the more we able to deeply enter into what we call a Sabbath rest. We trust in his word. That's why when folks trying to work for their salvation, I don't know why you're working for it. Amen. The Bible say work out your own salvation, but if you have it already, you ain't working for it. You're just working it out. Why would you work for it when, when you can rest in it? Jesus has already done the work. 
Amen. Already done the work. All he called us to do is to rest. Amen. Jesus said, I finished the work which you have given me. Say the work is finished. God does not expect me and you to work to be saved. <laughs> Amen. He does not expect us to work at all to be saved. Jesus said, I've done the work. I finished the work. I completed the work. Now, what is he asking of us, though, is to trust in the work that has been done. And that becomes the thing. That's why people struggle so much because they think they have to do it more than trusting. Amen. They struggle sometimes because they figure they have to do it. It's similar like, you know, when, 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 you, when, you, when God has called us to do something and, and we want to be able to, to, to let go. I used to say, uh, we, used to, we used to talk about letting go and let God. But, but let me tell you to you, people have a difficult time letting go and let God. And especially some of them that really have some control issues. Right. Say, say control issues. issues. Yes, yeah, sometimes among God's people, people have some control issues. Where they're trying to hold on to things, amen. But always understand this, that when your hand is holding on to something, it's closed. And when it's closed, it's not open to receive what God has for you. As we walk with God, we got to walk with open hands. Open hands. And open hands has a tendency to be trusting in God. Yes. You know, right. we have to be able to trust. The, the example of that is the man who fall off the edge of the cliff and grab onto a branch and all of a sudden looked up to heaven and say, God, help me. A voice from heaven says, let go. The man looked back up at heaven again and said, uh, help me, Lord. And the voice from heaven said, let go. <laughs> the man looked back up at heaven and said, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> Trusting God is all about letting go and putting your trust totally in him. Amen. Amen. And, and that's easy said than done. Because we want to control things and we want to be what we call empowered. And, and we want to say we are the ones who are doing this, that, or the other. Let me say, though, that if we look at the Sabbath as a day, more than we look at it as a rest. We might get caught up in the things where we want to say, well, then, if you don't do it on Saturday, then, then you might be in trouble. Uh, let me give you something, and I want you to know this, is that when you look at the Bible, the Scripture, and this is, not in, in, this is something I wanted to share with you. Look at Exodus chapter 31. I want to show you something. It's not up on the screen. If you have your Bible, you can leave them. You can follow along with me. Exodus chapter 31, I was reading this. I thought this was unique because I want to show you the importance of, 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 a, of a Sabbath rest. In other words, I want you to let you know that rest is important. And Hebrews tell us that we should enter into God's rest. And he who enters into his rest has ceased from what? From work. But look here in Exodus chapter 31. Moses had went up to the mountain. He had received the Ten Commandments or he has received commandments, amen, he comes down, and when he gets, before he comes down, in verse 12, it says, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speak also to the children of Israel, saying, surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it and holy to you, it is holy to you. Moreover, to who, whoever profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Moreover, does any, whosoever does work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For the sixth day, the Lord made the, seven, the heaven and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on, mountain, on the Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of the stone, and written with them, written uh, with, his, with the finger of God. Now let me just say something to you, is that at the end of all the time Moses spent up there with him, and he didn't talk to Moses quite a bit, 
Moses is getting ready to leave, and he tells Moses, you tell them kids down there, remember the Sabbath. Now, you see, to me, that means it's important. Remember the Sabbath. He tell him, remember the Sabbath. And, and so at the end of all that discussion, he gives Moses the last word. You know what it was? You tell them to remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath because the Sabbath is established what? That I am the one who sanctified you. I'm the one who set you apart for my purpose. Amen? I've done it. And so here we can see, no doubt about it, it was given to the children of Israel to be passed on throughout their generations. He said, <clears throat> he said, between me and the children of Israel forever. Yes. Now let me say to you, when we get into the New Testament, and I'm just sharing this with you, that, that they had an issue with, with it. Uh, somehow Jesus' disciples got hungry. And they decided, and, and, and that's, you might have read the stories in Mark, I think, chapter 2. But they decided they were going to pick them some corn while they were walking through the fields on the Sabbath day. I tell you, these boys here, these boys here was, was, was definitely not Pharisaic. <laughs> these boys here were like, we out here in this field and we are hungry. And so they started picking some corn as they were going along through the cornfield. And the Pharisees saw them and said, look what they doing, they picking corn on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, well, they hungry, I guess he would have said to me. He said, well, listen, David did something similar that was coming, if you will. David went into the temple and got the shoe bread. And him and his men, they ate it because they were hungry, which was unlawful to do. Yes. Now, they knew about that particular story because it was in, the, it's in, their, it's in their, their Bible, it's in the history. But no one, he says, now, nah, because I, and Jesus, I want to give you some understanding about the Sabbath. Man was not made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man. Let me say to you, there would be some that would have put Jesus and his disciples in their grave for eating corn on the Sabbath. Because according to the law, that's what they did. They killed folks who didn't keep the Sabbath. But they didn't do it to Jesus or his disciples. I didn't see nobody do anything to them because Jesus made it clear to them the Sabbath, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. Now, let me say to you, this thing about the Sabbath went on and on and on and on. And all of a sudden, the Jewish people always under the Sabbath. They do to this very day. But when the when Christians, when Gentiles became saved, all of a sudden, there became an issue whether or not Christians were going to keep the Sabbath or not. Gentile Christians. And no doubt about it, some people say, well, the Sabbath is not spoken about whether he was told to keep it or not. I had somebody say the other day that, that, that God never, I mean, so there was listen to someone, they said that God never spoke against, homo, Jesus never spoke against homosexuality. Somebody fixed their mouth to say that anyway. It was news reporters. Yeah. Well, he didn't. They say, well, he didn't mention. He never mentioned about them at all. <laughs> well, I declare to you, he did mention it. Yeah, he was talking to him one time. He said, you know, uh, he's breaking down marriage to him. He said, marriage is to be between a man and a woman. He said, God created it like that in the beginning. He said, that's why a man should leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two should become one flesh. Yeah, so he, he did he did talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that makes it very clear. Well, they say that Jesus didn't mention nothing about the Sabbath, although he did say Sabbath was not for man, was not made for man. Uh, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. But when it came to the Jews, they knew they had to honor the Sabbath. That was given to them. It was no doubt about it. It was a covenant. It was a perpetual covenant. It's a covenant between the Jewish people and God. When the Gentiles came in, they didn't know what a Sabbath was. Sabbath what? Sabbath who? Sabbath when? <laughs> didn't know nothing about no Sabbath. We didn't know nothing about a whole lot of things. So, when they began to be saved, the thing now was, what are they going to keep of the law? Because we know the law was given now. What are they going to keep? 
How are they going to keep the law? Open your Bibles to Acts. I want you to put this down at the top of your paper or something or whatever. I got at the top of my Bible, the letter. That's where I put it, right at the top of there. I wrote, the letter. Why? Because there was a letter given to the church of the Gentile. And you look at this scripture, we find out that uh, they were having some issues whether or not these Gentiles should keep certain things of the law. Particularly, they were looking at whether or not they should be circumcised. Now, let me tell you what, circumcision was given to the Jewish people, but I tell you what, them Gentiles were like, hold up a minute, we need to talk about this. <laughs> the, the, them Gentiles was like, we need to talk about this circumcision stuff. Anyway, no, they, 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 was, they were saying that, listen what it said in verse 15, chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men came down from Judah and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Wow. Yeah, boy, look here. If you ain't circumcised, I don't care how much you say you got faith in Jesus, you ain't going to be saved. And so, therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small uh, dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others should go up to Jerusalem and to the apostles and the elders about the question. So being sent their way to the church, they passed through, and it goes on, and they says, uh, uh, and it goes on in verse 4, and it says, and they, when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church of the apostles and the elders, and they reported all the things that God had done with them. But some sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Let me tell you what, this, this whole discussion about Sabbath day and the law being kept, it's no new thing. It was having trouble with it back then. It's having trouble with it back then. And, and, and especially, now the Jews were not having trouble with it among themselves. They're just having trouble with it among the Gentiles. And so it goes on to say uh, that now the apostles and the elders came together and considered the matter. And when they had been in much dispute. So they were, let me tell you, they were arguing over this thing, y'all. They, they, were, they were going back. There was no easy thing. And, 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 and notice is that what their argument was, they should keep the circumcision and they command them to keep the law of Moses. See, some people say, well, they just talking about, stuff. no, they weren't talking just about circumcision. There's two things they said there. And then it goes on, it says, uh, Peter rose up uh, among the men and brethren, and he and, and goes through uh, that, that God, verse 8, he said, so God who knows the heart acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. So Peter now gave his testimony about when he went to the house of Cornelius. So Peter said, listen, I went down there to the Gentile house and all of a sudden God, what? He gave them the Holy Spirit just as he gave to us. And in verse uh, 11 it says, but we believe that through grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the mouths do kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring the many miracles and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered saying, and brethren, listen to me. Simon had declared how God at first visited the Gentiles and, and, to make out, and to take out of them a people for himself, for his name. And with, the word, and with the words of the prophet agreed, just as it is written. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which is falling down. I will rebuild it, its ruins. I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, said the Lord, who does all these things. Knowing to God from eternity are all his works, therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God. Notice the term trouble. Very important. But that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. But Moses had throughout many generations those who preached him in every city 
being read in the synagogue uh, every Sabbath. Now notice this. Notice clearly. He didn't say anything. He told them clearly what he wanted these Gentiles to do and what he wanted them to keep. He said, listen, I want you to what? To be uh, uh, abstain from idols, or polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things stranding, and from blood. <clears throat> now he said, for, the, for Moses had throughout many generations those who preached him in every city, being read in the synagogue every Sabbath. So the thing is, they knew what the law said they should do. But yet, they only gave the Gentiles these things to do. Now let's look at the letter because the letter is important. It says, then it pleased the apostles that the elders with the whole church to send chosen men and their companies to Antioch, to Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who also named was Barnabas and Silas, a leading men among the brethren. And they wrote this letter by them, the apostles, elders and the brethren, and the brethren who are in the Gentile, uh, uh, or of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria and, and Cilicia. So here's the, here's the letter. Greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandments. Look at that. To whom we gave no such commandments. They went out, from, went out and told you that you should be circumcised and keep the law. He said, but to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas who will also report the same thing by their word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that you abstain from the things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, from sexual immoralities. If you keep yourself from these, you will do well. Right. End of conversation. That's it. End of conversation. Let me say something to you. The whole thing of the Sabbath is really about learning how to trust God. And that is not something you do on but the Jewish people were given a particular day to do, to set aside. There was no particular day given to the Gentiles. We should, we should practice a Sabbath in our own personal lives, whether we choose a Saturday or Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or whatever. We need to set aside a day for rest. But it's not necessarily connected to what they call the Jewish Sabbath that we now know in uh, that was part of the law that was given to them. It was given to the children of Israel, and they still to this day honor it. Now, I have nothing against brothers that want to honor it, too, if that's what you want to do. But let you not condemn those who don't honor it. That becomes the issue. Paul says some men esteem one day higher than the other. Some esteem all days just the same. That becomes the whole thing, is that we may look at the fact that uh, there are men among us, among the church, who honors the Sabbath. In the Sabbath day, the Saturday of the Sabbath. And they choose to set that aside. That's fine. There are others who set aside Sunday. Matter of fact, you'll find out that the Jewish men of that time and day, you'll see Paul going to the synagogue. And then you'll see Sunday, you'll see him meeting with the Christians. Amen. On the first day of the week. That's what it said. Yeah, they met on the first day of the week and break bread. Sound like to me. That's what it said. I think it's in 25th, the 25th chapter of Acts. It said they met on the first day of the week and they what? Broke bread. First day of the week, we know to be what? Sunday. Not Monday, Sunday. Okay? And so no doubt about it, they met on the first day of the week. But, they, but Paul, on a Saturday, I'm sure you'll find Paul at the synagogue, which the Jews went. Y'all follow me? Let us not lose sight of that, because if we do, we, 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 we get all caught up in the thing. The, the Sabbath day is a time of rest. But I think God meant it that we might understand the true spirituality of the Sabbath day, that it's a time of rest when we entered into this life in Jesus Christ. And that in him, we have rested from all our works. And what Sabbath is really about us learning how to trust him. Because the thing is, is that if you had things that needed to be done, you say the cow need to be fed, the sheep need to be taken care of, I got the, my barn down there, it's broken down, I got to fix it, you know. 
I got to go out here and, and, and cultivate my ground out here because I need to plant some seed. I got all these things to do. And God says to you, sit down. You see, sit down. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. You'll get your barns fixed. You'll get your cow taken care of. You'll get your sheep taken care of. You'll get your garden taken care of. Right now, you need to sit down and understand I am the God who's in control. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Let me say to you, no matter how God has blessed you on your job where you're at and how your income is coming in, never lose sight that we who know him know that he is the source of all that we have. Amen. He, he is the source. He is the one who has blessed us. And we have learned how to put our trust in him. Amen. Say trust in him. Yeah. If you have trouble trusting God, you have trouble with Sabbath. Because it's all about trusting him. It really is. Because you got to understand, brothers and sisters, it wasn't like it is now. You know, we get a lot of Sabbath, so to speak, today. But back then, men worked hard. They worked, they planted, and they grew things. I mean, every day was something to do. Every hour of the day was something to do. It was no idle time. Because if you didn't grow anything, then you didn't eat anything. You follow me? You just didn't walk down to no supermarket and get it like that. Oftentimes, they had to grow it. They had animals. If you're going to drink milk in the morning, you got to go milk something to get the milk. You have to get the eggs. All of this stuff was right there. They had to, and guess what? It was work, 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 work. Right now, I can tell you right now, farming and homesteading is work. It is work. It is not for the lazy in heart. And it's challenging. Because guess what? There's a lot that can happen that you have no control of. A lot that can take place that you have no control of. You have to really learn how to trust when you're living that way. Amen? It says it's not coincident that the Sabbath is on the day seven immediately followed the creation of Adam. I, talk, I shared that earlier. Why is that? Because what? God caused a pause, took time out. Do what? To, to, that's right. To take a break. Amen? Why? Say for relationship. Maybe the Sabbath was never about rules and regulations. I think Jesus was clear about that. They had rules and regulations that was laid down. But understand, those rules and regulations would make them stop. Otherwise, they wouldn't have stopped. They wouldn't have stopped. And, and maybe you couldn't blame them for not stopping. I mean, it was too much needed to be done. But God said, you're going to have to stop. And, 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 and the Sabbath was, was followed by a relationship. A relationship to do what? To enjoy. Enjoy what? Enjoy the presence of God. Amen. Say with me, say cease. cease. That means to stop. Let me say to you, not only stop, but to sometimes stop and be still. And just know that he's God. There is a brother, I can't think of his name right now, he wrote a book called 26, uh, 24-7, there you go. No, 24, 24-6? Yeah, I think it's 24-6, because in other words, the seventh day they rested. In other words, he say, you can do everything you need to do in 24, 24 hours and six days. The seventh day is the day of rest. 24, 24, 6 is the name of the book. Uh, I didn't bring it. I should have brought it. I could have showed it to you, but I've read it. Uh, very powerful when it comes to talking about the Sabbath in the sense of how it relates to us today and us resting in the presence of God. And how you, there's many things that families can do together. Sometimes have dinner around the table, uh, taking time out, uh, spending time together, maybe going on a walk. Uh, you know, uh, it's just coming together and uh, learning the importance yes. of the Father and his care for us. Amen. Amen. Let's just do something. Let's just stop for a few minutes and let's just rest for me a few minutes. We're not going to rest long because if you do, you go to sleep. Uh, but let's just stop. 
We got a lot on our mind. We have a lot of things to be thinking about. Some of you got stuff you got to leave straight from here and do. You say this preacher done went too long. But let's just stop for a moment. And let's just rest. In the sense of, let's just acknowledge him. First of all, let's acknowledge that he is here with us. Because he's the one that declared, with two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in your midst. So he's right here with us. Amen. The father of all creation, of heaven and earth, presence is right here with us. Then let us acknowledge that the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, lives in us. Not just with us, but he lives in us. Let's, Let's rest in that. Because maybe today you need some guidance. He's there to guide you. Maybe you you need some understanding. He's there to lead you and to, and to give you all things that, are, that, that is all about leading you into truth. Maybe you need to know something that you need to hear from him concerning a situation in your life. The Bible said he would tell you things that is even yet to come. He would reveal those things to you that God would have you to know. So let's just rest in knowing that he is with us. He would never leave us nor forsake us. You see, that scripture is saying that Jesus said, I sent the Holy Spirit to live in you, to dwell in you. And you can rest in trusting that he will take care of you if you would just follow him, listen to him, and let him lead you. Father, we thank you right now as we come to this time where we, we are looking to you and we are trusting in you and we're acknowledging that it's you who are the God that keeps us. That you are the one who saved us. You are the one who washed away our sins. You are the one, Lord Jesus, who done all the work. You completed all the work the Father has given you. That we who receive you and put our trust in you, may be able to rest in all that you have done. Help us this morning to rest. Help us to rest. Help us to rest in trusting you with our whole heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will Direct your path. Maybe you've been trying to walk this Christian life and you've been trying too hard. Maybe you need to rest in him. That that might sound kind of weird, you know, if you say you've been trying too hard. What I mean by that, you know, sometimes you start out, you you think you got a hundred thousand things you have to do and you realize that some of it is very simplified. I often tell people God wouldn't make living for him too hard because we wouldn't be able to do it. He made it very simple. Trust in me, he says. Trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. And see the one I'll take care of you. Amen? Amen. Amen.